So here's some solar panels with a rather bad fitment. And I'm not referring to the plastic. I'm referring to the metal connectors that are inside. And I don't know if the camera is going to really show the detail or not, but MC4 connectors have a male and a female metal connector that's inside that's supposed to be connected to the wire. And a lot of times these metal parts just do not fit properly at all. To show it in more detail, here's some of the metal parts that are inside the connectors. So now what I'm going to show you is what happens when I connect my high quality MC4 crimp connections to this solar panel, which by the way is a very nice solar panel. I really do like these. And I'm not trying to sell them or anything, but uh, they seem like good quality panels. The connectors uh, don't seem to fit very well. So let me show you what happens. So you can see this is the positive side of the connector and that's the side I'm having trouble with. The other side seems fine. And when I put this in here, it just does not fit well. It barely holds at all. And that's pretty bad. Now with a small solar panel, maybe that's not such a big deal. It's actually a problem because you could end up with a high resistance connection. These are supposed to fit pretty snug. And this one just doesn't. So let me show you the hack or the poor man's way of fixing it. If you look at these connectors, they're actually split in the middle. You can see right here, there's a split. And on this one here, it's a lot harder to see, but it's there. So what I usually do is I take a pair of needle nose pliers. You can do this while the connector is assembled. It doesn't have to be disassembled. And what I do is I just take the needle nose pliers and I stick them in there and I just spread that connection a little bit. And you got to be careful not to overdo it. And there you can actually see that I separated that a little bit. Now I kind of overdid it, but you can see where the split is in the connector. And you really don't want to do it quite that much. So what this will do, this will tighten up the connection. I think I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. Now I'm going to try it on the connection on the solar panel to see if it fits better. Okay, it's not quite enough, so I'm going to split it some more. And let's try it again. Much better. Yeah, much better connection now. Um, it doesn't take much to, to make a difference. Yeah, that's way better. And you can see how much I had to spread that to get it to fit. Now, ideally, you would do this while the connector is outside of the plastic enclosure, but unfortunately, that isn't always possible. Obviously, I wouldn't want to take these connectors apart. I just want to leave them alone. You can get a much more positive fit just by spreading the crimp part of the connector a little bit. You can actually get a much better, more positive fit. And in theory, less resistance in the connection. And probably isn't a big deal if it's just a single panel, but if you get two or three and you're pushing a few amps, it might be a big deal. I also don't like the feeling of connecting these connectors and realizing they're not fitting very tightly. I just don't care for it too much at all. Again, this is not a professional way to fix the issue. Ideally, you just replace the connectors with good quality ones. But I've been doing this for years. It works for me. It doesn't cost me anything. You can also use a appropriately sized screwdriver to sort of spread the connectors a little bit. And a pair of needle nose pliers is normally what I use, but you got to be careful not to bend them because they're really not meant to be used in the opposite direction. However, it does work. Now this can be used to fix both sides of the connectors. I've done it to both sides. It works on both sides. Just be careful not to overdo it. And of course you don't want to bend those connectors too many times because they might break or become damaged. And just a quick update on the solar shed ventilation project. I just wanted to show that I added an additional solar panel to the shed. And I added this new fan here. This is actually different from what I showed in the original video. This is a server fan. And I got to say, it works pretty well. And hopefully I'll be able to do another video showing that work. But it's now in the shed and it's working. You can see it right there. It's amazing how much air comes out. Only 8.5 volts. It's pretty, it's pretty strong. And this has served me well, but... I need a little bit more because it gets really hot around here and this system here does it most of the time but when it gets really hot i need more air and that's why i made the the new setup but i just wanted to show that this new one is indeed installed it's working right now the weather is very cool it's early spring and so i don't really need it but it's ready to go should the need arise and just a quick update about solar pv to load cooking i've got some videos coming out about that topic and they take a while to edit and produce but I've successfully cooked food using 
a very small system and I want to show that on video. So I'm working on getting that documented so everybody can see it. And this is actually the oven thermometer I used with solar panels and I was able to get over 300 degrees Fahrenheit and I was successful at cooking food. Those videos are in production right now. It takes a while to edit. I do have a new video editor, but yeah, it's kind of taking me a while to learn it. It's not very good, but it is faster and it allows me to put out smaller videos more easily than I used to be able to do. And here's something else in the workshop I thought I'd throw in. This is a lithium iron phosphate e-bike pack. And unfortunately it uh, packed up on me and I traced the problem down to a faulty cell. So these are these foil pouch cells. They're just in a stack. It's a 48 volt battery. Unfortunately, one of them failed and uh, I need to replace it. Not looking forward to that task. It cost me a few hundred bucks, so I really don't want to lose it. I didn't really get my money's worth out of it. So yeah, I got to repair this one. As of yet, I haven't found the time to do it. I did identify which cell had died and I went ahead and I disconnected the BMS. And I just, it's just sitting here on the workbench waiting for me to get time to fix it. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this short video about fixing MC4 connectors that don't fit well. And I hope it helps you out in some way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.